My friends designed a greeting card. Let's see how this goes. Also, sorry that the video quality is so bad in my intro. It will be better for the regular video. Just stick with me. Sorry about that. Hello, everyone. My name is Brennan, and welcome to... Brennan's Crafty Corner. Hello, everyone. My name is Brennan, and welcome to my channel. Today, I am FaceTiming a few of my friends, and I am having them help me make a greeting card. This is still a process video, but they're going to get to pick a few elements. So it's going to be a little different, and I'm a little nervous. Let's see how this goes, because... None of them make cards, so fingers crossed. Let's get into it. Okay, so we're calling my first friend. <laughs> you can see my filming setup too. Hi, Chevelle. Say hi. Say hi to the camera. Hi. <laughs> so you're the first person I'm calling. So, <laughs> but what do you want the theme of the card to be? Like, be be reasonable here. Not like something crazy. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go with beach themed. That actually works. Ooh, ooh, actually, I have a good stamp set for that. Okay. Okay, thank you, Chevelle. Do you want me to give you the card tomorrow? If, wait, are you making it tonight? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, you'll get the card tomorrow. Bye. Bye. So, we're doing a beach-themed card, and let me show you. I'm not letting anyone decide the stamp set, because I have, like, one beach-themed stamp set. Actually, do I, I do have two beach-themed stamp sets. We'll let someone else decide. Update, I like this stamp set a whole lot more than the other one, and I don't want to risk someone choosing the other one I have. So we're going to go with this one. It's Anchor of Hope from Honeybee Stamps, and there's florals in it, which I love, so this is why we're going with this one. But we have our anchor and our seashell, so our next question is going to be, which image do we do? Okay, so I have my friend Marielle on the phone. If she wants to say hi, I don't know if she does. Okay, so she's going to decide between which of these two images, whether she wants the anchor with the florals on it or the seashell with the florals. Which one do you want? I think the anchor is better. I'm so happy you said that because I wanted to do the anchor I used it on a card before, but I wanted to do it again. So thank you for picking the one I want. But it's yeah, I think it's it, it's really fun. I really like that image. Yeah. Well, thank you for participating. <laughs> Bye. 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 So we have decided what we're doing. We're using this anchor. Now I have to call someone else to decide what color we're going to do the flowers to actually start coloring. But the stamp is in my Misty, and I'm just going to go in with some Memento Tuxedo Black ink to ink this up. This is a Copic friendly ink, and we're using Copic markers. No one's deciding that because I want to use Copic, so we're <laughs> I'm only giving my friends so much freedom here because we don't we, we need the card to still look decent. <laughs> I'm going to stamp that again just to make sure we get a perfect impression. I think it's good, but we'll just double do it. There we go. Perfect anchor. There we go. Okay, this is now the second time I've called Allie. <laughs> so hi, Allie. <laughs> hi. So you're on camera if you want to say hi to everyone. <laughs> hi, everyone. <laughs> so I sent you the photo that or the stamp that we're doing. So it's the anchor with yeah. the florals on it. What do you think would be a good color for them? Um, probably orange. Okay. Oh, okay. I like that. Thank you, Allie. Of course. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. So for our orange flowers, we're going to be using YR07, 16, and 04. Firstly, with this YR07, I'm going to go along the edge of where the petal overlaps each other. This way, that's where the shadow would be, so that's where it would naturally be the darkest. This is going to be a very small area because your shadow and your highlight aren't the true tones, so there's very limited area of them. Also, I'm not going to do every flower because that would just get really repetitive, so I'll cut a couple out on camera. So now I'm going to go in with that YR16, and I'm going to go almost to the edge of the floral with it. I'm going to do almost the rest of the petal, but I'm going to leave a little white space for our lightest color just for that highlight. Since this is the mid-tone, the M stands for most, so you'll have the most color of your mid-tone because that's the true color. Now for this final color, the YR04, I'm just going to go over all of the petal with it. This will help to create a really nice blend and make sure all the petal is covered in orange to make sure you don't have any white spots left by mistake. For the anchor, I'll be using C7, or C6, and C5. So with that C7, I'm going to go along just a couple of the areas and do a very small amount, as once again, this is our shadow, and you don't want the shadow or the highlight to take up too much room, because like I said, it's not the true actual tone. So I'm just adding this a tiny, tiny bit in the areas of where the anchor is. And I'm also going to miss the top two parts where it sticks out. I will go back and do that later, I promise. So I'm just filling in the tiny areas. Now I'm going with my C6 and once again covering up most of the space that's left. 
this way, as that's the true tone it will have the most. Also, I find this find the cool grays can be a little bit finicky with Copics, so if you have to do a couple layers, that's totally okay with them. Then lastly, I'm going to go in with my C5 and cover up all the space that's left. This will be the highlight as it's the lightest color. And I'm just going to do this a little bit more. Now we're on to the leaves with our G28, YG67, and G07. So I'm going to go and I'm just going to do the very bottom portion of each of these sections on the leaf with that G28. This is going to create a really cool effect and I really like how it comes out because each little section is going to have a gradient and it looks really, really cool in the end. It does. It is tedious though. This part did take me about six minutes to do all the leaves. So I'm just going to do that on all the leaves, but I'm not going to show you all the leaves because once again, that is very, very repetitive. Now I'm going in with that YG67, and I'm going to fill in a majority of the white area that's left in those little sections. Like it before, I'm going to leave a tiny area at the very top for our lightest color for the highlights, but it doesn't have to be a large area. It will still be a cool effect, even if it's a very small area. And this is tedious, so you don't have to be perfect. I get it. Mess up, that's okay. I probably did here too. Now lastly, we're going, to, we're going to go in with that G07, and we're just going to cover all the sections. To be honest, I got lazy at the end and just started scribbling over the leaves <laughs> to get them done. I was being careful. See, you can see me scribbling. You don't have to be perfect. Just get it done, cover them all. So now that we're done coloring, you may have noticed that I went out of the lines. So I'm going to take my Jelly Roll um, white gel pen, and I'm just going to go along here and basically cover up all my mistakes. That's why I think every crafter needs to have a white gel pen, not only to add accents, and I'm not going to add accents to this because I really like how it is without them, but just to cover any coloring mistakes. Sometimes when the color is darker, it's harder to fully cover them, but even then it still makes them a lot less noticeable. So I think it's a really great tool to have. Okay, so I have colored the anchor, you all saw that, and now we have my final friend for the night, Olivia, on here. And I already sent her these background stamp options, so... We have this one with the arches, which is our first choice. We have this one from Hero Arts. It's kind of like whimsy, almost like wind, which I feel like could be good with the beach themed. And then we have this polka dot one from the stamp market, it's kind of different. And then we have this like lined one from Hero Arts as well. I was also thinking beach is almost like grainy kind of. So Olivia, do you have an option picked out of which one? I like the first option. The first, okay. With the arches, arches. white yep. in the back and blue. Ooh, okay. That would be cool. I feel like, yeah, that's definitely giving beach with the... Okay. Is there any, like, specific blue types or anything? Um, maybe, like, a darker blue. Okay. Maybe, like, a darker to, like, contrast with the white. Yeah, yeah, that would look nice. Okay. Thank you, Olivia. Thank you. Bye. Okay. So, we have the Confetti Arches background stamp from the Ton, which my friend Olivia picked out, and I have my larger size Misty, the regular size, and a stick and stamp mat from Brutus Monroe in here. And I'm just going to put a piece of cardstock that's 4 by 5.25 inches. I like to use a stick and stamp mat because it puts the paper in the center of the Misty, because when you're using a background stamp and it's in the corner, that typically leads to not getting the best impression, just because the corner here would prevent you from getting enough pressure on certain areas of your cardstock and that just leads to getting a bad image and if since we're doing embossing the whole thing would not be embossed and then it would just be a mess. So I'm gonna go in with some wow embossing ink and I'm just gonna ink this up. Actually I'm lying. I'm lying. That's not what I'm gonna do first. First and I should have done this before I put it in here but it's okay. I'm gonna go in with an anti-static bag just to prevent any incidents because we want this card to be perfect since my friends are making it. <laughs> now that we have our anti-static powder on our cardstock, we can actually go in here and ink up our background stamp. Make sure that's in the corner and stamp. And that is probably stamped perfectly, but we're just gonna do one more pass just to ensure we get embossing powder everywhere. Okay, we're gonna stamp that one more time. And there we go, you can see that embossing ink on there. So now I have some alabaster embossing powder from Brutus Monroe, and I have a coffee filter. I love using coffee filters when using embossing powder, since it helps to catch the embossing powder, and then you can just funnel it right back into the jar. It's really good, especially when you have a smaller jar of embossing powder. Obviously, this is like the big mama of embossing powder, but it's still really helpful now. I'm going to do one more pass through.
And there we go, except there's not a lot of embossing powder down here. What's going on? Okay, so as you can see here, I messed this up and I don't think I <laughs> inked up enough of the stamp or something happened because down here there's much more embossing powder than there is up here. So I'm actually going to go give this another go off camera and then I'll show you why this is amazing. So as you can see, kind of now, there's embossing powder all over this this time. I think what happened was a combination of me not using enough pressure and not using enough ink. I also used the Stamptabulous pressure tool this time to help me, but coffee filters are so amazing for this because you take it, you fold it like a taco, and then bam, straight in, no mess. And I can reuse this if I want to, and I am actually going to put this one back in the drawer because I'm running very, very low on coffee filters and need to get more. But yeah, coffee filters are an amazing tool for crafting. So as you can see here, my panel is all embossed. Look at that shine. We're doing the embossed resist technique now. Another way to do this, you could have blended on your blues first and then stamped in white pigment ink. And honestly, I think that might have worked a little bit better just because a lot of these tiny circles are tiny on here. So I think some embossing powder actually blew off, but I think it will still look really nice. So we're going to go in with something borrowed first. I'm going to do a gradient from light on the top to dark at the bottom. Still going to be pretty dark, the whole thing, but it will still definitely be a difference because dress blue is way darker than something borrowed. So we're just going on here. And on our lighter colors, I like to do a little bit more of it and go down maybe a little bit more than a third because it's going to get eaten up by that darker color. So I like to put it on a little bit more than I should at first, and then it will get covered up. So this is almost half the panel, but it will disappear, believe me, when I put on the suede shoes. So now we're going in with that suede shoe color. I'm also pressing too hard, so that's why I'm getting those weird marks up there. You don't want to go in too heavy-handed with brushes, because then bristles will go to the side, and then it will look weird. Okay, I'm going to go in a little bit more here and bring this darker color up a, tady, a tiny bit more. Okay. There we go. I like how that blend's looking. And now lastly, we'll go in with Dress Blues, which is our darkest color. And ooh, look at how dark that is. That looks almost black on there. So that's why there's not a ton of room for it down here, just because that could literally be confused with being black almost, how dark that is. Like if you put one in with enough of this color, it would just look straight up black. <laughs> it's like the night sky, that like tiny, tiny hint of blue, but almost black. Well, it is black, but you get what I mean. So there we go. And I'm actually going to bring this color up a little bit more into here because at this point it's barely there and it will just work like that mid-tone almost. And there we go. That's looking really nice. But as you notice, that white has kind of gone away. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take my stamp chamois and I'm just going to go over this and wipe off any excess ink and make that a little more white. And boom, there we go. I really like how this background came out. I think the anchor would look really amazing just on its own in the center. But I was thinking putting a strip of vellum down the center would be like the perfect touch because it mounts the anchor onto something. But also it has a more muted look in the center, but you can still very much see the true blue on the sides. So I really like how it looks. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put some tissue tape from Tonic Studios, which is my favorite way to adhere vellum. I actually have a whole video on it on the back of this strip of vellum. This is a scrap piece. I think it's two, yeah, 2.5 inches wide and I don't know how long it is. So I'm going to put some tissue tape on the back of this and then I'm going to plop it down and you'll see how amazing it looks. Okay, so I have my tissue tape on here. So what's amazing about this tape is that it's basically frosted just like vellum. So it just still basically looks just like regular vellum on here, but this whole back side's adhesive. Now, it is extremely sticky. So I only have one shot at this, so let's make it a good one. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Since this piece is longer than the card base, I can actually like align it up. Actually, you know what? I'm going to use the grid on my mat. Okay, there goes nothing. Ugh. Okay, we're a little slanted, but it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. So now I'm just going to rub this down and almost perfect. If I did it a little more with a little more precision, it would be extremely perfect. But it's, you probably can't tell that much. You can tell, but it's okay. We're going to act like it didn't happen. <laughs> now I'm just going to chop off this excess and then we'll have our card front. And there we go. And to adhere this anchor, if you used liquid glue extremely sparingly, you could get away with it. However, I'm going to go in with some scrapbook adhesive. I believe these are a quarter of an inch foam dots just because I want to be safe rather than sorry. And I don't want this vellum like peeling at all because that's how vellum gets when it gets wet. 
since it is like all adhered, I think we would be fine since there's adhesive on the entire back of the vellum. I just don't want to take that risk. So we're not going to. Also, want to know a funny secret? I have literally no foam tape in my craft room. So that's why we're using little squares. I love the squares, don't get me wrong. But I feel like on this, it would be nice to just have one long strip going up here and then two small ones there. And then we'd be good. <laughs> but hey, it's fine. We're fine. With our foam squares literally everywhere on the back of this anchor, we can start peeling. This is gonna be a slightly long process because there's so many small squares. Then I will plop this down on the cart front. And we have all of our release paper off on our anchor. So now we can very carefully place it. I'm gonna go right there. Okay, I like how that looks. I feel like we're also on a more nautical theme than beach necessarily. So I'm sorry, Chabelle, I kind of failed on beach 100%, but I think we're beach adjacent. So for the sentiment, I was originally gonna go with friends or like the seashells we collect along the way. Cause honestly for 16 year olds to give that to another 16 year old, it's a little corny cause I'm giving that to my friend Chabelle. I've known her for about, I think 11 or 12 years. So I've known her for a very long time, but we would just laugh over that sentiment to be honest. For an adult, it's great, very sentimental. But then I was like, wait, that's not a seashell. I didn't use a seashell here. <laughs> so I decided to just go with the hello. And what I love about honeybee stamp sets and coordinating die sets is that there's a die to cut out the hello. So I emboss this on some black cardstock and white embossing powder again. And then bam, it's cut out perfectly for me. So I'm gonna put this right here. I'm not gonna cover the anchor, but I'm gonna put it right next to the anchor because it kind of fits in perfectly. I'm just gonna cut up some more foam squares and then I'll be right back. Foam tape on, or foam squares, foam squares, don't come at me. And we're gonna place that down right there. I really like that sentiment. The font on that's really nice. There's so much white embossing on here, but I really like that extra touch. To finish off this card, I just added a black mat to our card front and then glued it down to a card base so we have an actual card. And here we go. I really, really like how this came out. It could be questionable whether it's beach themed or nautical themed, but I think they're one and the same. It's close enough, but I really love it. Okay, I honestly really love how this card came out. They did like a really good job and they were all cohesive because they knew what the theme was. They all knew it was going to be a beach theme. And I gave the card to Chabelle today and she really liked it. And she agreed that it is a beach themed card. So we stayed on task. And if she thinks it's a beach themed card, it's a beach themed card. Thank you all so much for watching. And I really hope you enjoyed this video, even if it was a little bit different than your normal card process video. Have an amazing rest of your day and bye everyone. Happy crafting.